Okay, uh, just be mindful of time. Uh, it is the top of the hour. Everything that I'm saying here, I'm gonna throw into the chat for you as well, because I know folks are filtering in at the same time. Welcome to the Chicago Scholars uh, Virtual College Fair. Super happy to have you. We have six amazing institutions to hear from today. They are quite the experts uh, uh, for their institution. And the most important thing you really need to do is pay attention to the contact information that they give. Um, any links or anything like that, I'm of course gonna ask them to throw that into the chat so you can pull that out of there as well. This part's really important. Our panelists cannot see or hear you. Um, so if you have any questions during this 45 minute session, you need to use the Q&A button that's either at the top or bottom of your screen, that Q&A button, you can ask a question to a particular institution or you can make it a blanket statement for everyone um, and they will be able to answer that uh, throughout this session. Um, there is another session uh, that you can sign up for tonight, uh, two more, and then there are more tomorrow. So make sure you do so in the same place that you signed up for this one. And a recording of this will be sent out to anyone who signed up um, to uh, all the reps um, and, of course, will be on the Strive Scan website. And I will throw that link into the chat as well. Uh, with that, we are going to kick it off with Babson College. All right, thank you, Christy. Um, so hi, everyone. My name is Lindsay Ewing, and I am here representing Babson College. Babson is a small private business school that is located in Wellesley, Massachusetts, which is about 10 miles from the center of the city of Boston. So when we talk about our location, we like to highlight that Babson students have the best of both worlds. They are studying, as you can see from this picture, on a beautiful campus with a quintessential New England vibe, quad, lots of trees. It's about a 15 minute walk end to end. And yet we also have very easy access to a wonderful city in Boston for internships, uh, job placement, taking in a Red Sox game, all sorts of good things like that. When people think of Babson beyond thinking business, we hope that two other words come to mind, and those are global and entrepreneurial. We say global because we think if you're going to go into business, it's essential that you know how to relate to people who are like you and people who are different from you. So our community of 2,400 undergraduates reflects that. We have about 30% international students from over 80 countries. Our domestic students usually come from 49 out of the 50 states, about 75% from outside of New England. Uh, we have about 20% first generation students, about 40% students of color. So there will be folks here that are very much like you and that you understand immediately, as well as people who are very different from you. And when they share their perspective in class, uh, there's a lot of learning on both sides. Um, the other word I mentioned is entrepreneurial. So within the realm of business, that is what we are known for. We've actually been ranked number one for entrepreneurship for the past 24 years, which we are quite proud of. But we do think it's important to say a little bit about what that does and does not mean, um, because it doesn't mean that every student who goes to Babson graduates and starts his or her own business. Uh, we think of entrepreneurship more broadly. We talk about it as a mindset where we are going to teach you through small hands-on classes how to pivot, how to think outside the box, how to not be afraid of failure, how to take calculated risks. And that mindset is going to serve you well, whether you go and work at an established organization in something like finance, marketing, accounting, uh, or whether you have your own venture and take entrepreneurship in that traditional direction. So to say a little bit more about what makes our academics unique and how we cultivate that mindset, um, our classes are small. You will have um, about 25 to 30 students in each class. We do not have any teaching assistants at Babson. Our professors have experience working in industry as well as um, you know, advanced degrees. And every student at Babson starts their own business in a small group with seed money from the school in their first year. It's the only program of its kind for freshmen in the country. We call it Foundations of Management and Entrepreneurship. And to give you a sense, we've had um, students start businesses where they write books. We've had students at start jewelry businesses, really all kinds of things. And they're all beginning with a UN sustainability goal because we feel strongly about making the world a better place through business, creating not only social, not only economic value, but also social value. Um, beyond that hands-on and entrepreneurial aspect of our education, uh, you will be getting a Bachelor of Science degree in business. 50% um, of your coursework and your degree will be in business, but you also will have the opportunity to take liberal arts courses. Um, and there are 27 different concentrations that range from things like accounting, marketing, 
uh, finance, to technology, entrepreneurship, and design, to literary and visual arts, legal studies, because if you think about it, there is a business side to everything. So um, we find that our education is incredibly versatile and 99% of our students are employed full-time or in graduate school within six months of graduation. Um, so Babson is routinely ranked one of the top schools for return on investment. Beyond what's offered on our campus, we have a partnership with Olin College of Engineering and Wellesley College. So you can take courses at those two institutions, which makes our course catalog three times or, you know, two uh, times as big as if it was just Babson. Um, we are a residential school, so all of our first years are required to live on campus. After freshman year, you're no longer required to live on campus, but most students choose to do so. And there is a lot going on. Um, we have sports, arts. Uh, we're a school of entrepreneurs, so if there's an extracurricular you don't yet see at Babson that you're excited to have on campus, by all means, bring it our way. Um, it's an exciting place in the country and in the world to be a college student. Briefly on admission, uh, we have two application deadlines and four application plans. Uh, we are fortunate to be a need blind school um, for domestic applicants, which means that uh, when we are evaluating your application, we have no sense of what your family can contribute to the cost of a Babson education. And if you are admitted, we will meet 100% of your demonstrated need as calculated by the CSS profile and the FAFSA. Because of this need blind policy, 90% of our budget does go towards need based aid. Um, the remaining 10% is for merit scholarships, and those are quite competitive, but they, they need to go to somebody every year, so there is no reason it couldn't be you. Um, I'll close by sharing some contact information here and just highlighting that we are a small school. Um, we, for the size of our school, have a relatively large admission team and we, we love to hear from students. No question is too uh, silly, too small, too large. So please um, feel free to get in touch with us over the course of uh, the next six months, the next year, wherever you are in your college journey. Um, and I wish you luck and hope to uh, connect with you soon. Thanks for listening. All right, thank you. Um, make sure you throw any contact information you can into the chats. Uh, next up, we have Bryant College. All right, there we go. Getting off mute might help. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Um, can you all see my screen all right? Yeah. Awesome. Um, my name is Katie. I'm the Associate Director of Admission at Bryant University. We are a, um, a institution that's in Smithfield, Rhode Island, which is right around 15 minutes outside of Providence. We have about 3,500 undergraduate students. Students are coming from 38 different states and 60 different countries. About 25% of our students identify themselves as student, uh, students of color, with an additional 20% being first generation. Um, here you can see we were founded in 1863 and you'll see our little mascot right there. Um, one thing to remember us by is our little mascot. His name is Chopper. Fun fact about Bryant is that Bryant, um, this is actually Bryant's second campus in Smithfield. So if you ever go to Brown, those are Bryant's old buildings. Um, we moved to our location in the 1970s and the owner of Tupperware, which is a Bryant graduate, actually donated the land to us. Um, so therefore, um, we're, the mat, our, we're the Bulldogs and um, hope you can remember Bryant by Tupper. Um, at Bryant, we are, we used to be Bryant College um, that some um, of your counselors or some of your parents may remember us as. Bryant College was just a business school. Once we became Bryant University in 2004, we got the College of Arts and Sciences as well. So the different thing at Bryant is that all of our students are required to have a major and a minor. One needs to be in the College of Business and one needs to be in the College of Arts and Sciences. So if you look in the background there, you can see a couple of different combinations of that major and minor. Um, for the College of Business, our top three majors are finance, accounting, and international business. The neat thing with our international business program is that all students are required to minor in a language required to do a semester abroad and required to do an internship abroad. So it really sets those students apart right off the bat. For the College of Arts and Sciences, biology, psychology, and communication are our top three. We do have a pre-med advisory track for students that can go on med school, and we do have a pre-law advisory track for students going on to law school. So that's something that we've been really trying to highlight a little bit more, that College of Arts and Sciences, just because so many people still 
think of Bryant as just having business. We have an average class size at Bryant of 26 students. All of our classes are capped at 35. So you're really a name at Bryant and not a number. Um, we do have an academic center for excellence, which is our tutoring services on campus. We have a first year program called our gateway courses. Um, two of these are more business focused, two are more writing focused with this idea program in the middle. That's a pretty Bryant staple for us. Um, this idea program centers around um, design thinking and it's set to solve a real world problem from a local business so um, if you have any questions on that you know we'd love to talk about the idea program but due to time's sake we'll we'll skip over that a little bit for now at bryant we have what's called our amica center for career education and they're the ones that help you get jobs at, on jobs and internships they bring over 400 employers to campus recruiting our students host a lot of first round interviews as well as um oops as well as connect with our alumni base. You can see at Bryant, we do 99% of students have a job within six months of graduation with the average starting salary of 60,000. So some important things to know at Bryant is that we do have a new three plus one program where students can get their MBA in four years. Um, we also have the only accredited physician assistant school in Rhode Island. So those students who are looking to do biology with a pre-med advisory track, they do have the option to use those facilities as an undergrad. So that's really important that we always like to highlight. We are on the Common App. Um, for those of you who are familiar with the Common App, it's a great place to plug and chug your information, press save and call it a day. Our average GPA is right around 3.4 and a 4.0. And we will recalculate your GPA as well. And SATs are about 1270 math critical reading. And um, we are an ACT where 26 in the composite. We are a test optional institution as well. Um, you can see everything that we, requ re we require as part of your application there. We do have a couple of application deadlines that you see on the screen as well. Um, upon if slash when you apply, all students receive a link for their admission portal and there you'll be able to check the status of your application at a real world time. We do have merit-based scholarships that students receive upon um, acceptance, and those range from $8,000 to $35,000 per year. Um, and you will receive those on, uh, upon acceptance. And we are only on the FAFSA other than that. In Smithfield, we are on 435 acres. You can see some of our beautiful facilities right there. Uh, I will say that one of our, one, we have 25 Division I athletics. And one of our swimmers this year is actually in the Olympics. So she's swimming for her home, um, home country, the Virgin Islands. So we're very excited to, to keep an eye out and watch her um, journey throughout the Olympics. But we do have a 91% res residential campus um, and about 10, 15% uh, of our students are commuters. And other than that, I will drop my contact information, but we definitely welcome you to Smithfield. I will say if you are looking to visit us at any time, we do have a travel reimbursement program where we can, um, we will reimburse you up to half your plane ticket um, coming to Bryant. So we would love for you to be there. And like I said, I will drop my contact information in the chat. All right, thank you so much. Uh, next up we have Barnard College. All right, wonderful. Hi, everyone. My name is Grace Bradley. I am a senior admissions officer at Barnard College in New York, and I'm very excited to be here with you today. Um, if there's anything that you take from today's presentation, I encourage you to take away these four main what we call pillars. Um, so these are kind of the four distinct features of Barnard College. Um, the first one being that we are a small liberal arts college. Second is that we are an all women's college in partnership with Columbia University. So we are one of the four colleges within the larger Columbia University consortium. And lastly, we are located in New York City. So a quick glimpse into who our students are, where our students are coming from. As I mentioned, we're a smaller campus. So we are just um, over 200 or 2,300 students on campus. Um, so it's one of those campuses, small enough where you'll see people that you know, but also large enough, especially with Columbia's campus, 
that you're constantly going to have that opportunity to meet new people. Um, our students are coming from 41 different states, including the US um, territories and DC, as well as 29 different countries. Um, and also we are handling students from a variety of different backgrounds as well. Um, which will become important in just a few moments when I speak about a new initiative that Barnard has just launched this year called Access Barnard. Um, so that first pillar that I talked about is a liberal arts education. If you have never heard that term before or you've heard it a lot and you're still kind of confused by what it is, no worries. Um, basically, a liberal arts education at a place like Barnard basically means that we are going to teach you how to think and not just what to think. So it's really this opportunity to engage in a variety of disciplines by really thinking outside of the box and really thinking through what we call an intersectional lens. So kind of when these ideas um, come together that might be conflating ideas or perspectives. Um, so everyone at Barnard will declare at least one major. Um, some students will double major, some students will have a major and a minor. Um, they might have a combined major or a special major, um, but you will have that focus. You will graduate with a degree in a major of your choosing, hopefully something that you are excited and passionate about. Um, but you are also going to be really exploring outside of that major because of the liberal arts experience and because of what we call foundations. So foundations is what we call our, our main curriculum. And the one thing that I wanna pull your attention to is this thing that we have called modes of thinking. So this is basically an opportunity to really think in different ways and through different perspectives for the courses that you take. So you might be in an art history class that is fulfilling your thinking quantitatively and empirically requirement, or you might be in a psychology class and having to think about social differences. So it's really giving you that opportunity to learn through different lenses and be able to engage in conversation with your peers as well as your professors as most of the classes will be taught in a seminar conversation style. So Access Barnard, which I mentioned at the top, is our newest initiative this year. Um, and it's basically an approach to support and provide resources for students who are coming from um, first-generation students, low-income students, and international students. So a couple of the different resources that we offer students might include things like textbook lending programs, um, opportunities to borrow laptops for the semester or for the year, um, even flight reimbursement and flight assistance if you need to go home in an emergency, especially if you're an international student or even for domestic students. Um, so it's really creating a new um, community within the larger Barnard community itself. The second pillar is that Barnard is an all-women's college. Um, and so I encourage you to think about Barnard as an all-women's college not in the sense that it is no men and the absence of men, but rather the presence of women, because historically education was not designed with women in mind, but every aspect of Barnard was. Um, so when we were founded in 1889 as an act of rebellion, which I think is pretty cool, um, we really have gone forward in thinking about how the spaces, how the curriculum, how the faculty, how the staff, how the community can really serve to empower these young women that make up this community. And so we really do produce a very robust alumni network, and I would encourage you, I'm sure you see some faces on here that you might recognize, but if you're interested in learning more, I'd encourage you to look up a name of someone that maybe you don't know as much about and look at their journey and look at their story and maybe see how Barnard has played a role in that. As I mentioned before as well, we are in partnership with Columbia University, it is literally a stone's throw away from our campus. Um, but you will have access to over 7,000 undergraduate courses, over 30 libraries, 500 clubs and activities, as well as access to undergraduate research at both institutions. We are also part of the Ivy League Athletic Consortium, so you will have the opportunity to participate in those athletics if you choose to do so. And finally, that final pillar is that we are located in New York City. I am from New York City, so I might be biased, but I think it is one of the most exciting cities um, what I really appreciate is that it is a community Barnard. Um, we have green spaces on campus. Most people live on campus. Um, we have our own traditions, including one called the Big Sub. If that tickles your fancy, feel free to <laughs> read more about it. Um, but you will also get to use New York City as your learning and living laboratory, whether that is for classes, for internships. Um, you really have all the amenities of New York City right at your disposal. And finally, if you liked what you heard and you want to get to learn a little bit more about us, 
here are some of the next steps to learn a bit more. And I will also put my personal email into the chat as well. But thank you all so much. All right, thank you. Next up, we have University of Vermont. All right, cool. Thank you, everyone. Thanks so much. Welcome. My name is Chris Prolongo, Associate Director of Admissions at the University of Vermont. I use he, him pronouns, and I'm a first generation student also from New York City. Uh, but I'm proud to say I oversee our initiatives for underrepresented students here on campus. So especially happy to be with Chicago Scholars tonight, because as a college partner, we're able to offer significant scholarships and aid that meet close to full need. Um, so we're excited to be here. And if I do a halfway decent job tonight and you like what you hear, we also offer a fly-in program in October and November offering full fare to campus. So before I forget, let me put my name and information in the chat. If you want more information on anything I just said or anything I'm gonna say, feel free to reach out anytime. So with that, it's my 20th year in higher education. And I know I can't cover all things UVM in these few minutes. So let's just dive right in. So UVM has been around since 1791. We're the fifth oldest university in New England after Harvard, Yale, Dartmouth, and Brown. As a small public Ivy designated research institution, our nearly 10,000 undergraduate students have the benefits of a large research university in a more intimate college setting that's walking distance from downtown Burlington. And we're a bit different from most state flagships in that 75% of our students come from out of state, covering roughly 48 states and 60 different countries. We offer 100 different majors in seven undergraduate schools and colleges, as well as an honors college, graduate college, and college of medicine. And undergraduate students can pursue over 40 different accelerated master's programs, ranging from public health to complex systems and data science. But now let's talk about what makes UVM a little bit different. First, it's our unique academic ecosystem. It's a combination of all things UVM, the campus, the lake, the mountains, and the city of Burlington. With close to 100 different service learning courses, we're one of the top Peace Corps producing schools out there. With over 200 clubs and organizations, 18 Division I sports, and more than 10,000 internships, 70 study abroad opportunities, and over 100,000 alumni throughout the world, there are plenty of ways for students to find community here at UVM. And students could do research on Lake Champlain or go for a run along the 22 mile bike path that runs along our beaches. The Green Mountains offer some of the best hiking and skiing on the East Coast. And as a land grant institution, they're home to research stations throughout the state of Vermont. Second, our students are engaged, they're involved, and they want to make a difference. UVM recently made the decision to fully divest from fossil fuels, and more than 25% of the food served on campus comes from local farmers. We were the first institution to declare public support for freedom of religion, and the first to admit women and African Americans into Phi Beta Kappa Honor Society. And every student who arrives at UVM signs our Common Ground Pledge. It's a commitment to the values of respect, integrity, innovation, openness, justice, and responsibility. And students find support in a variety of ways, including our identity centers, our Mosaic Center for Students of Color, our PRISM Center for students who identify as LGBTQA+, our Interfaith Center, and our Women and Gender Equity Center. Third, it's our commitment to community. And students at UVM live and learn together in what we call residential learning communities eight different theme-based housing modules, ranging from sustainability to social impact to our nationally recognized wellness environment, which essentially means healthy body, healthy mind. And it's 100% of our first year students will live in these communities with on-campus residency offered all four years and required the first two years that you're here. After that, plenty of students will take, move off campus to take advantage of Burlington, which is just steps away and looks pretty good too. We're not just a place where students enjoy church streets, food, coffee, and shopping, but a benefit from internships in business, tech, and science, working with local icons such as Burton and Ben and & Jerry's ice cream. And how do I get here? Burlington International Airport is just five minutes away from campus with direct connections to New York City, DC, and of course, Chicago as well. And a quick note about outcomes, our students are finding success at high rates all over the world. As you can see by our employment numbers, some of the places they're being employed and finding careers, and of course, our overall graduation rate. Now, when it comes to applying to UVM, all students will apply directly to one of our seven different schools or colleges, either with a major or undecided. And the honors college you'll be considered for requires no separate application. It's usually reserved for the top 5% of our applicant pool. And students can apply with using the Common App or the Coalition application. We are an early action school with a deadline of November 1st, and we will be test optional for next year and the year afterwards. 
We do also have an optional essay, which while not required, can be encouraged. We just wanna learn more about you as we talk about you with our community. But last but not least, we do offer merit scholarships to all students who apply, and we do offer financial aid as well, with 87% of our students receiving scholarship or aid just last year. And as I mentioned earlier, as a college partner, we do are able to fund Chicago Scholar students just a bit more and are able to offer enhanced scholarship as well. So with that said, we hope you'll consider UVM. You have my information in the chat. And thank you so much for being here tonight. Good luck in your college search. Thanks, everyone. All right, thank you. Uh, next up. Oops. Have it on. Oh, we have everyone there. Okay. Uh, next up, we have DePaul University. Wonderful. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm really thrilled to be here um, and excited to share a little bit more um, about DePaul with you all. Um, welcome, welcome to everybody and special shout out to our Chicago Scholar students. My name is Rebecca Hernandez. I'm an assistant director with the Office of Undergraduate Admission, and I oversee all of our mission student population along with our CBO partnership. So I'm excited to be here. And some of you all may know me um, by emails um, and connections that we've already established, but a big, big uh, love to all of our Chicago Scholar students. So what you see on the screen here, and I hope that some of this information for you all, you may have heard, but I strongly believe, and as I've chatted with many of our students from Chicago, but even with our Chicago's uh, scholar students specifically as a former mentor, is that even within Chicago, there's still so much to learn about the universities that are here. So let me go ahead and share a little bit more about why DePaul could be so unique and could be a potential good fit uh, for each one of you. Some general information about the university. We were founded in 1898. We are named after St. Vincent de Paul, and we are the largest Catholic university in the nation. By no means do you have to be Catholic to attend de Paul. We really want to focus on the teaching and the service side of things. Primarily in how unique we are, where we were founded, especially in the Lincoln Park area here in the city of Chicago, was a predominantly and heavily immigrant neighborhood. We were one of the first few universities in the state of Illinois to also admit women and students of color. And we want to honor that and we want to be a reflection of that and we'll talk a little bit in just a few minutes about how we continue that reflection and that is through just basis of our student body right and so what you see on the screen here and what i want to draw your attention to is where our students are coming from there's a wide range of students that are joining us at depaul and we're really proud of that um, we want to be a reflection of our city and being in the city of chicago that means plenty of diversity and spaces for our students they're coming from all different states strong tie to our first gen and our students of color as i am myself and a really strong tie to our first year retention. So as all of us are here and we're really thrilled and you know have a strong tie to admissions and to recruiting our students, DePaul specifically really focuses on the retention piece. And we wanna ensure that our students stay with us, they graduate, they find their long-term dream job, or they go on to continue their education with us or um, elsewhere. I mentioned the uniqueness of where we are, and many of you, of course, are from Chicago, but also from surrounding suburbs in the state of Illinois. But DePaul is unique in where we're located. Uh, many schools here mention the best of both worlds, but Chicago is more uh, unique than that, right? And where we're located, the best of both worlds, which is getting the downtown area, the hustle and bustle, the Fortune 500 companies. And then you get Lincoln Park, which is tons of green spaces. You have the lake less than a five minute walk from us, as well as Lincoln Park zoo and then you also have the train system right which gets you in and out of the city as often as you want we have over 100 different neighborhoods in the city of chicago and we are known for many different things um you all are probably very familiar with being food city the third largest media conglomerate in the nation and many many other uh, additional recognitions. But one of the most unique aspects aspects of depaul truly is the lincoln park campus Additionally, at DePaul, we have over 300 different academic programs, over 100 different and 150 different undergraduate programs, and our average class size is 20 students. So we are probably one of the largest schools in here in terms of our academic programs. But as you can see, you are going to be 
not just a number for us, right? We want to ensure that you have that personalized level of education. And you may be wondering, well, what are those popular majors? What does a student at DePaul even think about? What are they majoring in? And as you can see highlighted here, you have a wide range of academic programs. We are a liberal arts study school. So as many schools here mentioned, right, the benefits of being in a liberal arts education. But at DePaul, it goes beyond that. We really want to ensure that our students have an opportunity to join many different things, whether that's from their academic program, the over 300 different clubs and organizations that we offer. We are also a really strong AP, IB, and dual credit school. So for those of you, as I'm sure many students are within Chicago Scholars, are you know great achievers. You want to ensure that everything that you work towards during your high school time is honored at college. And that means saving you money and also saving you time. We have four plus one programs, three plus three programs, and we also have ties to Rosen Franklin University of Medicine. We have our own entrepreneurship center. We also have the second largest media company um, as a partnership with us, which is called Cinespace. And we have many, many other opportunities for you. But in terms of academics, those are some of the highlights. I mentioned going beyond just that recruitment piece, and that is a retention piece, meaning that, yes, we want to be a reflection of the city of Chicago, but we also want to honor that you are all going to come from different walks of lives, and the needs that you all may have are going to be very different. So you might take advantage of our career center, which 96% of our graduates upon graduation have landed their dream job or going back to get their master's or continue their education elsewhere. We also have five different cultural centers. We have our centers for students with different abilities, advising, mentorship programs through our Office of Multicultural Student Success, writing and mentorship book lending programs are available for everybody. We also have our own entrepreneurship center. We have our interfaith space. We have our Jewish center and our Muslim center, and I can go on and on. But we want to ensure is that you have a successful four years here at DePaul. For some of you, it might be a little bit longer, but ending up with that long-term degree. Outside of that, additionally, is what happens next. I might have fallen into Paul. I want to visit campus, and I'll share all of those links with you all, is what are we looking for? And that is part, we're part of the Common App. All we require is your official high school transcripts, and we are test optional. Some of the important uh, dates, application dates, are located there on the screen. And if you have any additional questions, my contact information is listed there. Thank you all so much for being here. All right, thank you. Uh, next up, we have uh, Suwani. Hi, everyone. My name is Leticia. I am an assistant director of admission here at Suwani. And let me get my screen set. All right, so um, I'm so, so happy that you all are here. Here at Sewanee, I handle uh, many of our community-based partnerships. And so I am super excited to um, be sharing Sewanee with you all, whether this is the first time you're hearing about Sewanee or whether you are familiar with us, um, just I'm so happy that you guys are tuned in. So at Sewanee, we are located in Tennessee. We're located in Sewanee, Tennessee. Our official name is the University of the South. Um, but since we're located in Sewanee, Tennessee, we become, um, we have become known as Suwannee. And so here is one of my favorite spots on campus. A fun fact about Suwannee is that we, um, our campus sits on 13,000 acres. So it actually makes us the second largest college campus in the entire country, just on sheer acreage. Um, but we have a pretty small and close-knit community with just about 1,700 students in total. Um, and so I'm going to kind of dive into the opportunities that you have on campus, as well as academic beyond here. So like I mentioned, just under about 1,700 students or so, um, we have students coming from about 44 different states, 30 other countries. 80% of our students do come from outside of Tennessee. Um, so, you know, coming from somewhere that is not Tennessee, you will not be alone in that. Um, like I mentioned, our students are pretty much coming from all over. And um, on campus, I would say we do have a pretty close knit community. We are a fully residential campus. And so our students are living on campus all four years for the most part, 99% of them are. Um, and so you definitely have the opportunity to have a lot of different living um, 
you know, experiences in terms of dorms or um, apartments or townhouses, all of those kinds of things are available to you on campus. Um, but the way that our campus is set up is that most students are living on campus all four years. And so I think one thing that really makes us unique is that we take advantage of where we're located. Um, and so we have something called the Suwannee Outing Program that really allows you to explore those 13,000 acres. Um, so just to kind of give you an idea of how big that truly is, like you can see here, we have about seven and a half acres per student on campus. If you think about a large house, you know, usually sits on maybe one acre or, you know, maybe two if it's like a really large house. And so it really kind of gives you an idea of how big our campus is. However, central campus where you will live and take most of your classes and, um, you know, go to the gym and things like that is about 100 acres. And so you definitely have uh, more of a residential experience you can walk to class, you can bike to class, um, you don't have to drive in between your class buildings or anything like that. Um, but we have tons of untouched forestry around us. So if you are a person that likes the outdoors, we have 60 miles of hiking trails that you can take advantage of um, on our campus. We have 13 lakes, we have an equestrian center, a full golf course, we have a university farm. Um, if you like to go rock climbing and mountain biking and cave diving and canoeing and kayaking, you know, those are the kind of things that you can do on campus. And our Suwannee Outing Program um, sponsors those trips and sets those things up um, weekly for students and it's all included um, and is free to you as a university student. So beyond that, um, we, when it comes to our academics, we have 38 majors, 44 minors, we have a few certificate programs as well. I think the most, um, the thing to take takeaway in terms of our academics is that we are, um, like I mentioned, we are a small knit university, a small knit community, and that translates into the classroom as well. Average class size is 17, professor um, to student ratio is one to 10. Um, and so we have the opportunity for you to really get to know your professors all of your classes will be taught by full-time faculty members. We do not have any teaching assistants teaching our courses. And you really kind of get that opportunity to have that personalized experience and really get to know your professors, get to know your classmates, um, and really kind of forge your own path. We are a liberal arts institution as well. And so our curriculum is pretty much split up into three different components. Um, and so I will leave this here so you can see all of the majors and minors that we do currently offer. Um, but your curriculum here at Suwannee is going to be split up into three parts. One will be the major that you choose. Um, you do not have to select your major until your second semester of your fresh, um, soft, sorry, of your sophomore year. So if you're not sure what you want to do, that is completely okay. If you do know what you want to do, you can come right in doing that. So you do have that option. The second part of your curriculum here at Suwannee will be your core curriculum. And so here at Suwannee, we have learning objectives. We don't have a set um, amount of course courses or set kind of prescribed courses that every student takes, but instead we have learning objectives and there are so many courses to choose from within each learning objective. And so we want you to still be able to choose things that resonate with you or that are interesting to you. Um, while you're completing those core requirements. And then lastly, we have electives. And so those are the things that you are taking that um, are purely kind of what you enjoy and what you want to pursue. And so I'd say about 60% of our students have a major and a minor. Um, about 14% of our students do double major. So it's possible, but it's not something that our students do very often. Um, so you do have those opportunities, but it's um, definitely not, not as popular, I guess, here amongst our students. Um, and so you'll see some pre-professional programs in that business, education, engineering, law, and medicine and health. So we do have pre-med options. We have pre-law engineering. We have a three-two partnership with a few schools in which you would do three years at Sewanee, two years at a partner institution, and you would graduate with two bachelor's degrees, one from Sewanee, one from that partner institution. Our education program is great for a student that knows that they want to continue on and get a graduate level education degree. And then business we have as a minor and as a pre-professional program, it is still great for students that want to graduate Sewanee and go right into business related careers. So you can do that. We have really great programs um, that are tied into this business pre-professional and um, 
looks like I'm running out of time. So um, I will put some links in the chat. One thing I do want to just stop is um, show is this. Here you can see averages in terms of GPA um, test scores. And we are a test optional institution. And um, we have been test optional for a pretty long time. And then also one thing I want to note is that we are a school that meets 100% of demonstrated need of all of the students that we admit. So um, filling out the FAFSA, filling out the CSS profile is important for us. And then you will see our application deadlines here. So I will put a bunch of links in the chat so you guys can explore this a little bit further. And also I'll put my contact information in there as well. All right, thank you. Um, if I could have everyone uh, come back on screen, we're gonna do a round table question, uh, starting with Babson. What advice would you give someone going through the college search process? A piece of advice I would give someone going through the college search process is talk to as many students as you can um, when you are, uh, if you have the chance to visit a campus, if you're in this session, virtual session that has students, um, their perspective, because they're living the experience is the most valuable one you could possibly get. My piece of advice would be to visit campus if you can. I think that you heard, um, you know, we talked about the flying program. I know I heard UVM talk about the flying program and there were a couple more. I'm sorry if I forgot you, um, but I think it's a great opportunity and a great opportunity to kind of connect. Um, you know, it's one thing doing all virtual things, but another thing getting the feel on campus as well. So that's my little piece of advice. My piece of advice would be, if you can, um, look at the course catalogs for the colleges that you're interested in, even if you know exactly what you want to study, and especially if you have no idea what you want to study, the course catalog is a really great place to start because then you will actually see what courses could be available to you. You can start to do some research on the professors that you might want to work with, and it's kind of like that more tangible way of being able to like kind of map out what those four years or more could look like for you. So I would highly recommend that. My advice, be confident in your search. Uh, understand that last year was different for all of us and admissions counselors too, we were in the same position. So don't feel like you're at a disadvantage you had an off year, it's gonna impact your college application process. All the students throughout the country, throughout the world were impacted the same way. So don't feel like you're at a disadvantage, be confident and be putting in the work. And you're doing that by being here tonight. Yeah, I would say, you know, you all are rock stars um, at Chicago Scholar. So there is, I think you all have a great handle, but if there's a piece of advice that I wish, you know, I even had heard and something that I like to share with students that I work with is do a little bit of soul searching too. Um, you are going to visit schools. You're going to fall in love with a couple. You're going to probably find many schools that you're like, immediately I walked the school if you get an opportunity to do so, or I'm at the rep and you know what, it might just not be for me. But I think a really great list of needs versus wants, and you may not know exactly everything that you want or everything that you need at this moment. But I do think that sometimes that soul searching piece is missed and you want this university to give you everything and that might just not be it. So really do a little bit of soul searching, have that conversation with your family or that support system. And trust me, you will be set to go. So I think they have given an amazing advice thus far. The only thing I would add is just to really utilize the admission counselors that work at the schools that you are interested in. Like that is what we are here for. That is literally our job. And, you know, reach out to us if there is an um, optional interview or optional um, kind of meeting or something like that, that you can have with that person at the admission office, do it, you know, do that, have that one-on-one -on -one time, get your questions answered. Um, and just don't be afraid to email us, to call us, to reach reach out with anything that, um, any question that you may have throughout the process, because that is what we are here for. All right, awesome advice from our experts. Um, I think that was a great way to wrap it up. Uh, reach out to these folks. This is, again, this is what they do. They're here to help uh, your next steps and make sure you find uh, the right fit for you. Thank you to our experts, to our panelists for being here. Thank you to our guests. Uh, if you're watching this recording, thank you so much. Um, if you are here live, when you leave, there is going to be a four question survey. Very much appreciate if you could fill that out, uh, sign up for more sessions in the same place that you signed up for this one. And again, a recording of this is available at StriveScan's website, but will also be sent out to everyone who signed up for this and was a part of this. Uh, again, thank you so much. 
have a great night and good luck in the search.